Welcome back. I'm Todd from Toxic Garage Customs. Thanks for joining me. You'll probably hear a dog barking a lot in the background, so you'll just have to put up with that like I do. The thing never stops. Anyway, back on the GMC this time around, and what you might be able to see over my shoulder there is that we've got the other cab corner in. We've already done that one, and now we've done that one. And what you'll see throughout this video is that we're going to continue on with the bottom part as well. So the part in between the two cab, cab corners. At the moment, we've got it cut out, but you're gonna see us finish that off. We'll fabricate a part. We'll do that on the bead roller. Sam's gonna do a lot of that, and I'm gonna do part of it as well. You'll see what goes on there. What you might also see, I got my green XM on the hoist. Future work coming up there. Anyway, stay tuned, I'll see you. Part way through the video. Just prepping up uh, the back cab corner of the um, GMC again. About to do some more work on it. So uh, just cleaning off any of the uh, surface rust, which there wasn't much, and any of the uh, primer, the black undercoat type stuff on the patch panel. Just generally cleaning it up with a strip disc. This one here, it's like a fiber disc. It's good, it doesn't take metal off, just cleans the surface up. And I've also uh, put in some uh, holes to put some plug welds, some spot welds uh, across the uh, floor section just there and just around here. Now there's a few pieces here that have been sort of diced and spliced to get a weld up that bit there. That's just a little plate that's holding on holding parts on generally. So just through here, this piece here, I weld that in. Just got to modify this little corner just here. The cab corner that comes in the replacement panel, I think is a little bit long through here, but I'll get most of it in and then I'll modify this area here if I need to. It may come together, there's a little bit of movement, a little bit of flexibility in here because everything's sort of separated. And then obviously we'll come through and we'll do some work across the back. But I guess firstly, probably need to remove the fuel tank. It's not pretty, but you've got that piece tacked together across the top and down the corner there. All I'm trying to do is give it some strength and trying to get the lines right through here. They're a bit all over the place the further up you go. We'll worry about that as a secondary thing. So I'm just about to go through and weld this line at the back here and that'll just give me a strong fixture point to put that section of the cab corner onto. So I'll go through and weld that from the back and that way it'll be less cleaning up from the front and then I'll patch up anything I need to from the front as well. Just a little interlude. I used to have really, really good eyesight. And in my more recent years, my eyesight has deteriorated something terrible. I wear different glasses for different things. So I've got really up close glasses for when I'm working on cars, and I've got distance glasses, and I've got just normal reading glasses. So my eyesight's bad enough. What doesn't help is when my welding helmet screen looks like that. So I'm about to replace that with that. Now that might look terrible, but this actually still has a protective film on it. So my word of advice is if you struggle with your vision, 
don't make it any harder by welding with something that's terrible. They're cheap, replaceable items and they make a world of difference. Why am I saying this? Because when I was just welding, I was having a lot of difficulty seeing. And then it occurred to me that perhaps something that is as clear as that might be better than something like that. I'm going to do that. I do. I've been fitting this uh, cab corner up and it's fighting me a little bit. I did have it fitting really well, but I couldn't get this line to line up real well. It's still out a bit, so what I might need to do after I've got it in place is just run a blade down here, close that gap up a bit. I think when I've welded this section in just prior, um, it's just changed the shape a little bit because I actually had this cab corner fitting on really well before, but you go changing things, putting heat, tapping it around, things are going to change. Again, this is where the trim piece goes on the side. I uh, tried to do that so that the um, the join in part is behind that, which is good because there's a little bit of panel distortion in this one. Uh, I'm going to try and bring it together as best I can, but I suspect there's going to be a little bit of height difference from this panel to this panel, but I will try and correct it as I'm welding. So I'm coming around, I've actually managed to open up a gap on the back, like I did exactly the same as I did on the other side. Um, different reason, but I've managed to open a gap in exactly the same spot. So, around the back here, this gap has opened up, but I'll be able to keep all this stuff together. So that's a minimal, it's a minor thing in the big picture of things. When I come around here, I'd say that gap will open up a little bit more because this metal this line around here is shorter than the line around here, which I think is going to push it that way, which means I might need to trim the end up a little bit as well. But it'll be fine. It's just um, it's just interesting how well it was fitting before and now I've actually had to spend a fair bit of time adjusting it. But as I said, put heat into things, change them, uh, that's bound to happen. So well, I'm just going to go through, do some tacks through here make some adjustments as I go, then I'm going to change my welding wire. I've got 0.8 of a mil in at the moment, I'm going to change it to 0.6 again. Same as I did on the other side to reduce the amount of heat going in there. Okay, so got that spotted in in a few places. It's um, good, there's no lippage. Just had to run the one mil blade on the zip cut through every now and then just to open it up because as I was welding it, it was pulling together. So just ran that through there. So I've got a good welding joint through there. It's closed up a little bit tight up here. Where are we? Up here. The thing you've got to be concerned about with that is that if it's already touching when it pulls heat in, when you put heat in it pulls together and it ends up buckling so I'm going to go through and recut this. I might just use my uh, air hacksaw to do that but you can see this has opened up as I predicted it would and it's overlapping now at this end here so uh, I'm just going to run that up, trim that up to size and I'll have to just put a little infill piece in there, no biggie. So um, once again welding along this line here it's behind the tray and this will be a good area to body fill because there's already an existing seam there it will give us less distortion when we're welding because there's more strength more structure from this um, fold in the sheet so um, yeah that's the reason for coming along there and also just trying to um, keep as much existing material as possible so I will go through I'll cut this end Spot it in in a couple of places, tack it in. Um, I'll go through and recut this just to open it up a bit, give me a little bit of room for expansion or for contraction, and uh, then we'll work our way around. But I will change to 0.6 wire also after a little while. So 
all tacked in place, sitting really well. So at this point here, I'm going to have a look at this here. So what you may be able to see is that it's sticking out of it. Let me get a ruler. So you may not be able to tell what we've got. It's about two or three mil, so about a 30 second of an inch sticking out. And it's a little more obvious when I close the door. So you can see there, it's a bit hard to read the gap because of all the, the paint and so on, but it's quite close there. So what I'm going to do is just run a blade, a one mil blade, just down right on this lip and tap it in. And then I'd say I'll need to do that two or three times. Just tap it in until I open this gap up through here so it's the same right the way through. And then once that's done, then I can weld it back together. Okay, so I ran the grinder through twice, and if I push this in, you can see how that closes that up and continues the line up here. Now I've got to go through and correct the line on the side of the door anyway. Uh, it's a bit wobbly. We did a rust repair there. Uh, so there's a little bit of a dip in through here. So between the two, I will be able to get a good line through there by slightly adjusting the door and slightly adjusting this here. So uh, I'll put some tacks on that just to hold it in place. Okay, just a couple of tacks holding that in place. I put a fair bit of weld right in the corner just here as well because uh, it was a bit squared off. So I, I pumped some weld in there because I'm going to grind that off to try and get some roundness back into it. And I'll do the same down through this corner. I'll um, put a bit more weld in there that I want so that I can go through and round it off a bit. Also just went through and did these few plug welds here just to hold it to that inner piece and a little bit of welding up here to do. But it's sort of fixed in place there. So I can now go through and carefully finish it off. I've gone through and just tacked in between the other tacks. I'm actually still on the 0.8 wire. It's fine, I just had really good experience with the 0.6, but I'm probably gonna stick with the 0.8, just so I don't have to change the wire over, to be honest. So I've just, um, Run another bead through there. This is a really strong structural part of the truck here, so I'm not worried about warping and distortion through there. Whereas on this sheet metal, now this um, body panel thin stuff that's straighter with less bends in it to keep its strength, uh, I'm more concerned about warping. So just going through bit by bit. I've also taken my helmet off and just put some gear down to slow myself down. It's really tempting to just jump on the welder and just keep going, but I'm trying to slow myself down to allow the heat to go out of this panel. About three or four minutes into it, just doing short jabs of about three or four spot welds. So I choose one spot weld and then just do another three or four on top of it and then move around. And I'm only doing about one spot two spots, three spots, four spots, and then I'm letting it cool down and going somewhere else. But what I'm doing now is I'm picking up like that weld there, for example, this one here. Where's my finger? That one there. Then I'll join that one, two, three, four, or three, across to the next one and so on. 
sometimes it's really tempting if you're only one world away from joining the next one to do another one or another one. I'm just stopping. Three. Three. And by going one on top of the next on top of the next, then it avoids pinholes. In between letting this uh, weld cool down, I've just made up this little patch piece. It's a tiny little piece and I've just put it on the end of this piece of welding wire. And the idea is that I can then hold that in place. And also I needed to shape it up a little bit so it just gave me a handle to shape it. It's hard to hold this weld I'm showing you. But that'll just go in there so I'm just gonna weld that in. The reason I did that rather than just try and fill it all through full of weld is that it'll put less heat into the job. I've done just about all of the welding. There's a couple of little spots there which I'll come back to, um, but I'm just going to go through with a grinding wheel on my 100mm grinder, my 4 inch grinder, and just aggressively take the top of it off. And I'm using that because I want to do it quickly without creating too much heat. Um, people often overlook the fact that grinding generates a lot of heat and that can create distortion. So I'm just going to go through with that. I could use a um, flap disc or something like that with a with an aggressive grit on it, something like this, which I will do in a little while. But the grinding discs, quite frankly, are a bit cheaper and I've got plenty of them. So I'm going to aggressively take the top off and then I'll jump onto a flap disc and then I'll work my way down in grit, but without putting too much heat in at any point in time. If you look carefully at what I'm doing there, I'm using the very tip of the blade. So just a point like this, and that's the only part touching the weld. I'm not touching the metal on either side of the weld. If I need to, I'm, if this, my finger's the weld, I'm going along like that. If I need to make the contact area even narrower, if I turn the blade on an angle, and keep going backwards and forwards, I can really pinpoint down. If the metal is buckled, then you will hit the uh, metal if it's too high or if it's too low. Uh, whereas if you've got a nice flat true panel, then you can get that weld down nearly dead flat with a grinding with grinding. Now I'm only getting it as close as I can with this and then I'm going to jump on a really neat sharp um, flat disc and grind it down and then I will jump on my little um, angle grinder on the air, the air angle grinder uh, and I'll clean it up with a coarser grit, a finer grit. So we got power in the shed. We have a car on the hoist and in the world of customizing and fabrication and modification that the first car you put on the hoist is of course a Kia. And what are we doing? We're doing what all Kias deserve and we're holding it together with a thousand zip ties. Because while electricians might tell you that they were designed for them, they're wrong. They were designed for plastic cars. So this one's rebuilt, but over here, we've got some real gear going on. Hey, Sam. Oh, hello there. What are you up to? Uh, just cutting the back of my car off. As we do. Yeah. Do you want some cable ties to put it back together? Yeah, it should be the trick, I reckon. Okay. Or the alternative is? Cut, cut, weld, grind. Yep, all that. So you got to cut the back of your car off. Yep. What a stupid thing to do. Okay, so why are you doing that? Because someone decided to make the back bit underneath here too yep. long. Oh, who was that deal? Yep. Oh, so that was me. There's a tab under here that it's meant to sit nicely under. Yep. Or on top. Well, this is meant to sit under, the tab's meant to sit on top. Yep. And it doesn't. Oh, okay. And also, whoever took the back of that yes. off butchered it. That was also me. Yeah. So um, you've drawn a line there. And yeah, I've drawn a few lines. Yep, so you've <laughs> got to follow them or you've just got to randomly cut anywhere? Uh, I'll aim for this one. Okay. 
Okay, good. <laughs> right. So you got to cut the back of that off without cutting through anything else. Yep. Obviously, and then we will fabricate up a piece to go in there. Yes. And then weld it all back together. And other than the fact it will be a different colour, no one will know the difference. Good work, and it's good to see you wearing your PPE. Thank you. Who are you listening to at the moment in your PPE? I'm listening to... Copyright infringement uh, approaching. Yes. Copyright infringement yeah, approaching. actually on anyway. Oh, okay. So no one. <laughs> no one. Okay. All right, well, um, do some work. All right. I'm going to eat my burger. Thanks, Lily, by the way, for cooking me a burger. Okay, so Sam's cut that piece out. He's going to cut the bottom off the piece that we were referring to earlier, that when I fabricated it, this piece here, which is attached to the floor, I made it about a sixteenth of an inch, three mil, too deep, so too long. So Sam's just gonna cut the bottom of it off, and then that will mean that the, the panel has got a bit of a, a fold in the bottom of it. Um, it'll be able to pull in nicer to that so one um, hopefully that will come together all right just looking the panel i've made actually comes along a little bit further but i think it'll pull in okay there and so it's sam's just grab this piece of cut off so it's got that profile on the bottom there so it obviously goes around that way but oh, it's a bit butchered there but um the sheet, that piece I'm talking about, sits in there, so it was a bit long, stopped it pulling in properly. So it's an appropriate time to just fix and replace this anyway. So it's got a few bends in it. My brake isn't long enough for that, so I'll make it in two pieces, two halves, and join them back together. Okay, so I was just marking up the two bits of steel that Sam cut earlier. 
to, um, I was just marking where the folds need to be. And I got a little folder there. So my little um, brake only folds 405 millimeters wide. So luckily those pieces are about 385 mil wide. So I've just got to make, no, not that, as I was showing before, just got to make that. And they're not sharp bends. So I'll just have to play it by feel, I guess. You can learn with me. So as you saw, I ended up doing most of that on my bead roller, and I'm the first to admit I'm not very experienced with the bead roller, so the fact that I managed to get it to um, come together, I'm pretty impressed with. So um, I'll be using that more. That is the purpose of it, but it's just something I don't use all that much. I guess it comes down to not being confident with it, and I'll use it more. So I'm just going to uh, tack the two pieces together. I'm not sure if I really needed to cut it into two pieces in the end. I probably could have done it all in one, but I did end up um, putting it in the, the brake anyway, which only does 405 mil. So um, I guess there's that, but I could have uh, hand formed it a little bit, which I did a little bit of that as well. But I'm very happy with this. The profiles come up very similar. So I'm just going to tack it together. And then I'm being told that I need to go in and have something to eat. So I haven't finished grinding this off yet, but what I'll do, I'll go through there and we'll use a fine flat disc and we'll probably get the die grinder with some even finer grid on there as well. And we'll get that to a paint ready stage, well, primer ready stage. So it's all looking pretty good. I'm very happy with it, the way it's come up. And as we said, 
we'll finish this part here off as well. It's all looking good, pretty good on the inside. Oop. So we've got great penetration. I'm going to turn this camera around. We've got great penetration happening down there. So it's all very good. So um, as I said, that's the part in the middle that we need to do. Just got to tack that on. And <clears throat> got to do a little bit of tidy up here. We've discovered another spot over there that we need to fix as well. We're getting there. Getting very, very close with this, this internal. So, uh, yeah. Watch. Okay, back on the uh, back of the GMC here. And cleaned up this weld. Oh, I might just buzz over it one more time, but it's pretty close. There's a couple of little uh, pinholes and some areas that actually haven't been welded that need to be done. So I'll zap those in and give it a buzz. And that'll be that ready for prep for paint, prep for bodywork. So I've started putting this piece in. As I said, as you saw, it was made in two pieces. So I'm doing the cut and butt method here. So I fitted it to one end and it's just sitting over the top of the other metal. So I'm not going to lap it. It is going to be butt welded. But what I'm doing is I'm cutting it a bit, welding it a bit, cutting it a bit, spotting it and so on. So you can see I'm up to here. I'm intentionally cutting into the um, patch panel because it sits up a bit high just here so I want to come back down to this line here. So I'm just running through with a one mil angle grinder. It's a little bit of an awkward position. Or it's okay through there but it's a bit awkward with this brace here. So a bit of a miscut there but that'll be okay. So just running along there I will cut a bit more and then the two pieces of metal pull together and if they don't then I just assist them. The screwdriver, sorry about the shadow there, just assist them with a screwdriver by just pulling it one way or the other, like that, lining them up. Once they're perfectly flush with each other, then I just put a, a tack there and move along. So I'll, I'll move along this way. So what I'm doing is starting from one end, working my way across, so that if the metal moves, if it grows a bit, now then it's all growing in the one direction and I can trim that end up at the end. Uh, there's a little bit of um, roughness in the remaining metal there, which I have no doubt I'm going to be blowing holes when I try and weld that. But it is what it is. In hindsight, probably could have gone another three inches and it would have been okay. But we're getting there. So we'll continue along with that. And we'll get it all buzzed up. So those areas that are missed weld there, a bit more obvious when there's daylight outside. Yeah, we'll fix those up as well. Coming up okay.
So what you can see there is that I am tacking, cutting, tacking, cutting and pulling it together so it's on the same plane. I've just come up to the end bit here. As I said, there's a bit of messiness through there. So I'm not convinced that's going to be pretty welding, but we'll see. So I'll pull that part in. I think I've just got to cut it a little bit more down the bottom there. We'll pull that in and then little by little we'll go through and we'll tack, do a, let it cool a bit, do a few more tacks, let it cool and so on. Same as I've done on any of the other areas. Okay, so we've got all that stitched up and you'll notice that dog's still barking. Got that all stitched up, ground up. I've got to say, it um, is all buckled and warped and twisted. This piece here, not, I couldn't work out how to stop it from being like that. But it's all in, it's plug welded, it's going to have body filler in it, no doubt about it. I could lie and say that I'm going to hammer and dolly it out, but the reality is I'm not. Uh, the tray's going to be here. It's solid, it's just bent. So unfortunately that's the way it came out. But we've now got both cab corners done, and we've got the piece between there, and I've just gone through and done a little bit more on the internal in here as well, just a little bit of cleaning up. So we're nearly there. So I went through, did a couple of um, welds, still got to grind them off. I've got a hole there that I need to fix, I just realized. Still got to fix the piece there. And we've got to put the floor extensions that go into the corners here. But it's looking good. It is coming up well. And there's a hole in the back wall there that I've got to fix that came with the panel and I don't know what it's for. So it's looking good. Sam and I are going to put this up onto the hoist at some point in time and start cleaning up all the weld from what we've done over the last year and a half underneath where we've never really been able to get to the underside. So that'll be pretty good. And then other than a couple of little spots, most of it in here is done and we can actually start towards the cleaning it up, ready for uh, yeah, sound deadener or whatever's going to be in there. We can play around with the floor and, and all that sort of stuff. So that's good. Well, that's the end of this video. And it's the end of the repairs or the metal work, the welding on the back of this cab. As I say in the video, there is just a little bit to do inside and there's a, one more patch on the firewall. Um, two, yeah, two, one or two more patches on the firewall. And then most of the rust has been fixed in the actual cab itself. There's still a bit in the doors and a bit here and there, but we're making progress. Now, this part in the middle here, I'm not super happy with it, but it is what it is. It, it, it's gonna have to live that way. We'll body fill it and so on. It, it'll be unnoticeable, but I don't like hiding stuff behind you know, body filler. It's gonna be a little bit thicker than what I'd hoped, but it'll, it'll be what it'll be. Um, the cab corners are good and the sills and all that sort of stuff. So this has been a pretty big effort and uh, we're nearly getting there. I know Sam's pretty happy about that. He's still trying to decide whether he's going to um, paint this thing and make it all look pretty or whether he's going to paint these bits and then sort of faux patina it a bit. He's still trying to work that out. What do you reckon he should do? Make it look pretty? Make it look a bit patinaed? You let us know in a comment. That'd be great. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching along. Uh, I enjoy making this content and I know Sam does as well and you'll note he's in the videos a lot more now and uh, yeah so come back the next video will probably be on either the Datsun or the Green XM which is on the hoist it could even be on Audrey the other XM I don't know but I've got some work planned on a few cars so see you soon thanks bye